Hello guys and welcome to my update for the Hybrid Templar and man do I have something special for you guys. So if you guys know, I have recently in the past few months put up a Hybrid Templar build um, for the Morrowind patch and it was a great build. It was a good hybrid build but Somerset patch is coming and with it comes jewelry crafting as well as two-handed sets counting at or sorry two-handed weapons counting as two items towards your five-piece sets. So this obviously meant that I would have to rebuild my hybrid and some big changes came that allowed me to really push the strength of this hybrid build to another level. So let's take a look at the build guys. As you can see from the stat page here, we've got very equal maximum pools coming in at 20k max magicka stamina. We are in PvP, so we have 22k health without any food buff on this build as we're just running a drink right now. So here you can see we have what looks like fairly low max stat pools and fairly low health. This is the most underwhelming statistical area of this build is your max stat pools. Don't worry, 20k is just fine and uh, it's because we have so much weapon and spell damage to make up for that lack of magicka stamina. And then the max health, we are in medium armor so 22k is fairly appropriate. If you feel like you need more health for this build, you could always run uh, a regen drink that gives you max health as well, like Orzorga's Smoked Bear Haunch or Crowns of Misrule. Uh, for the regens, we have awesome Magicka Stamina Recovery. 1639 Magicka, 1834 Stamina Recovery. Wow. This is, you know, you guys have seen my hybrid builds in the past. Um, we switched to the uh, the resto bar. The recoveries actually go up a little bit because we have Repentance uh, on this bar. But you've seen my hybrid builds in the past, and they have always sported very low recovery. And it's because I have always said that hybrid builds don't need as much recovery as other builds. Well, now we actually have as much recovery as other builds on the hybrid, and with these recovery pools, you should honestly almost never run out of resources as long as you're pulling from both pools. This means that you'll pretty much have unlimited resources. This is insane recovery for a hybrid. Almost 4k stats coming in every two seconds. Just just from your regen and I mean you can pull effectively from both pools for damage and healing this is huge this is huge for the hybrid now because we're running the drink in the regen here what we could do is switch over the drink um, for something else like a max stat food if you wanted to go for a lower recovery higher damage spec to give your hybrid more uh, aggressive DPS so if we went for let's say the uh, blue food and I was a dark elf I would have no trouble pushing 27 K magicka stamina on this build as as a dark elf running the blue max stamina and max magic of food um, so there you see how we could replace the regen with more damage if we really wanted to but for the Templar I think the regen is more worthwhile if I was on a DK for example I think the damage would be uh, a better option so there you have it so let's take a look at the weapon spell damage we're gonna buff up with the greatsword and here you see it, just about 4,400 weapon and spell damage on our greatsword bar. Of course we are running the infused staff with the weapon spell damage enchant. So our weapon and spell damage on this build peaks at 5,050 weapon spell damage. Now we are always swapping to our resto bar, so we will almost always have that buff up. So 5k weapon and spell damage on this spec absolutely incredible amounts of weapon spell damage and that's where the bulk of your healing and damage is going to come from just how big these weapon spell damage stats are as for our crit pools we have got 25.8 percent spell crit we are running reflective light so this goes up to almost 36 percent when we buff and then the weapon crit is sitting at 33.3 we do not have access uh to a weapon crit buff on this build but you could run pots or even use jabs if you wanted to get the weapon crit bot bot uh sorry buff on this build as well for the spell and physical resistance, we have pretty uh, pretty decent numbers coming in here. Not anything crazy because we are in medium armor and just about 2k crit resist, which is just great. You do want around 2k crit resist in medium, I think it's kind of bare minimum. As mentioned before, we are using the Cloud Rest as our drink. And like I said, you can always replace this with another drink that you feel like will help your build out. You want to focus on food and drinks that give you uh, max uh, max recoveries and max stats. You want to stay away th from things like max health and health recovery. Um, unless you really want the max health for your build, you feel like you need it. Otherwise, I think it's much better to dump into the max stat because your build will benefit more from that. 
All right, so let's take a look at the sets we're running. So to start off, we've got two pieces of Slime Craw on. Now I am a Templar, and Templar does not have access to the Minor Berserk buff, and that's why we have Slime Craw here. So if you're going to do this build on, for example, a Warden or a Nightblade, and you get that Minor Berserk buff, you can actually replace the two Slime Craw with any Helm set you want, or even a One Piece Kenna, uh, One Piece Veladrith, or even a, a Dama House, or whatever you feel like you need on the build. Um, so there you go. Uh, but Slime Craw here is here, of course, because we are a Templar, and that Minor Berserk buff is going to be big for both our outgoing damages, so it'll help a lot. Uh, we've got Shackle Breaker on as well, and the Shackle Breaker is in our gear and our weapons here. So we have both Shackle Breaker weapons, and then we've got a little bit of Shackle Breaker gear on too. Uh, this is a great set, honestly, because we're running Pelinals on this build. I was torn between Shackle Breaker or Hunting's Rage, and when I did the math, Shackle Breaker just offered you more maximum stats than Hunting's Rage does. Hunting's Rage can offer you a lot of max stats, but unfortunately, it gives you a lot of weapon crit, which is not something that we can utilize a lot on this build. Whereas Shackle Breaker gives us nothing but recoveries, weapon, and spell damage, and then our max stats, and that is something that we really need on the hybrid build everywhere. So I decided to pair Pelinals with Shackle Breaker. And it's really good. Here you can see we got the five Shackle Breaker on, and then we've got the five Pelinals on as well, copying our weapon and spell damage, or our weapon damage over to spell damage. Pelinals, of course, is going to give us a little bit of max health and recoveries as well, which is great for the build. And uh, it's due to the fact that we have so many tri stat glyphs and a little bit of max health from Pelinals that we don't actually need to run any HP bonuses in PvP to have a decent health pool on this spec. Uh, so, looking at the uh, enchants on the jewelry, we have got the new jewelry crafted infused jewelry, and this is a big reason why this build got a huge buff this patch. Not only did adding uh, the ability to um, put on another five piece add the full shackle breaker set to the build, but on top of it, we got the infused jewelry. So I'm able to replace the 800 stamina that this would normally give me and put about 100 extra weapon damage on my enchant, which of course is copied over into spell damage as well. Well. So this essentially is a huge, huge buff to the Pelinals hybrid build, just the access to infused jewelry. I mean, we get over 100 raw or over 300 raw weapon damage just from our jewelry here. Very, very, very nice buff um, to the damage, as you can see. Uh, and in the uh, gear itself, we've gone with uh, a mix of impenetrable and well-fitted. So we've got three impen and four well-fitted on. Now you could go with divines if you want, because we are using the warrior mundus, and that will buff up your damage a little more. But if you're going to PvP on this spec, and this is a, supposed to be a PvP spec, you want to go with well-fitted and impenetrable. It's just going to give you the sustain you need to stay alive. And uh, the little bits of damage the divine gives you is negligible compared to this sustain. But if you're going to do dungeons, etc., Divines is definitely a better option because this isn't going to help you in dungeons. Um, for the enchants on the gear itself, you can see we've gone with all tri-stat Hacky Joe glyphs, and that's to bulk up all our stats as well as our max HP. And then on the weapons themselves, we've got the Nern Honed Greatsword and the Infused Restoration Staff. Nern Honed on the front bar, Infused on the back with the weapon spell damage enchant. Now on the front bar, you can run any enchant you want, and you could actually run poisons too if you want, and just have Infused back bar, poisons on the front bar if you want. Uh, a cool poison to run would be the 5% weapon damage bonus one. Could, uh... Bring your Pelinals hybrid from 5,000 weapon spell damage to 5,200 weapon spell damage. So that is an option if you uh, want to try that. And then for the potion, guys, it's really uh, kind of up to you. I would say you want to run a potion that kind of gives you whatever buffs you're missing. So this build, for example, doesn't have the crit buff, so maybe getting major savagery from your pot would be a good idea. Or even uh, the speed buff, which we don't have. I would highly recommend you run speed potions, or even like a major savagery in a speed pot would probably be the best combination pot to give this build all the buffs that it could have. So there you have it. For the skills, guys, nothing has changed since the last build. We've got Executioner to start as our Execute. You can go, actually, because our sustain's so good, you can go with either Morph of this or even go for Radiant Destruction for the Magicka Execute if you really want. And that's just due to the fact that we actually have tons of sustain on this spec. So we've really opened up uh, more usage of all our skills because there's nothing really locked behind uh, a high cost and low sustain wall. Um, we've got Crit Rush as our gap closer. Crit Rush, of course, took some pretty hefty nerfs um, since the last patch, uh, but 
it's still a good gap closer, and uh, if you feel like it's not doing enough damage for you, you can go for the Stampede more for the Snare. I still feel like Crit Rush can do a decent amount of damage, and with all the other uh, effects we have from our Solar Barrage and Reflective Light, it is a great gap closer to couple in for that killing blow. Honor the Dead is going to be our Magicka-based heal. This is our Magicka's burst heal. Very, very strong heal, and uh, it's going to save your life lots of times, returning a lot of the cost after you use it. Rally is going to be our Major Brutality buff, as well as a heal over time and our Stamina Burst heal. So here we have both a Magicka and Stamina heal on our hybrid. Very important to be able to survive with both our pools on a hybrid. You want to be able to use both pools offensively and defensively in order to play a hybrid to its full strength in PvP. And then finally, Binding Javelin as our stun. Like I said, you could go for the Magicka Morph here too. Doesn't really matter. I just picked Binding. Uh, for the for the ultimate, I went with Flawless Dawnbreaker just to buff up that weapon and spell damage. And this, of course, is going to make all of our healing and damage better on this bar. Flawless itself is a pretty good ultimate. However, it does not stun uh, like its counterpart does. And then on the Restoration Staff bar, we've got Reflective Light. Reflective Light, of course, is going to be uh, our damage over time. Got a bit of a buff in the Somerset patch, which is pretty cool. The dot lasts a little bit longer. Of course, it gives us access to the Spell Critical. Solar Barrage is our next skill. This is going to be a really nice pulse ability. It gives the Empower to our Light Attacks now, which increases the damage of your next Light Attack by 40%. So it's still great to increase your outgoing damage with your Light Attacks, and you can couple it with your Restoration Staff or your Greatsword. And a fun little fact, it re-grants you the Empower every Blast, even if you don't hit a target. So if you just cast it and channel, or just pound Light Attacks from a distance, you can get the uh, Empower buff on those Light Attacks as well. And then we have Repentance. This is here for a little bit of Stam Sustain and all minor recoveries. But honestly, due to our Sustain being so high on this build, Repentance is actually not really needed. You can run it if you want, but if you want to uh, switch it out for another skill, you totally can. Um, Extended Ritual is going to be our Purge. Very important for a Templar to remove all those negative effects from ourself. Uh, very, very important. And then finally, we have Restoring Focus. This is going to be our armor buff and give us access to minor protection and minor vitality, giving us a bonus to our healing that we do, as well as reducing the damage that we take. And then I went with Swarm as the ultimate. Devouring Swarm pairs really well with Solar Barrage, as well as Reflective Light. We've got a lot of AoE here, and of course, if you go for the AoE Execute on Executioner, then you'd have even more AoE to pair with the Devouring Swarm. It's a great alt, too, because it heals you, which is pretty sweet. All right, my my thing's all frozen. Here we go. Let's take a look at those CP. So starting off in the green tree, 23 Warlord, 8 Sprinter, and 5 Bashing Focus. Got to break free, got to sprint, got to bash, but not more than you got to do other things. So that's why we just have a few points in here. In the Lover Tree, we've got 56 Mooncalf, 56 Arcanist, 27 Tenacity. These are really important, the Mooncalf and Arcanist, if you're a lower CP player. This is what you kind of want to focus on to begin with. Um, tenacity is going to help out with your heavies, but it's not as important, I think, as the base recoveries because we have so much recovery. Um, and then finally, for the Shadow Tree, we've got Tumbling, Shadow Ward, and Befoul. Focus on Tumbling here because we will be doing a lot of roll dodging, but it is PvP, so we do need to block. Um, and uh, same thing here, focus on the Tumbling. So if you're a lower CP player, go for Arcanist, Mooncalf, and Tumbling to begin with, and then fill in the others as you get more points. Um, in the Apprentice Tree, we have 23 Blessed, 2 Elfborn, 43 Elemental, and 20 Spell Erosion. So a little bit in Blessed here because we do want to have a lot of healing power. Now, normally in a hybrid spec, you wouldn't see me put points into Blessed, but due to the fact that we are on a Templar and we have so much healing power, I thought maybe we'll put a few points in here. It's up to you if you really want to do this. You could just put these points into more offensive trees if you want. But there you go. Only two in Elfborn. We are not heavy on mag crits, so we're not going to play that game with it in our champion points. 10% um, bonus to our elemental damage. 43 in Elemental Expert. This one is really important that you dump an Elemental Expert and then a bit into Spell Erosion. About half the points you put into Elemental into Erosion. And this is just to ensure that your bulk damage is going to be increased with your magic abilities. You're not relying on crits, etc. This is the tree you want to focus on. And then the Erosion, of course, is going to accentuate that by increasing your penetration. In the Atronach tree, we've got 40 Master at Arms, 9 in Staff Expert, and 21 Physical Expert. And then just 1 in Shattering Blows because I had an extra point left over. Um... 
But the big one you want to go for here is Master at Arms. This is going to increase all of your direct damage attacks, which about half your attacks on this build are, including your Light and Heavies. Physical Weapon Expert is more important than the Staff Expert because you deal more damage with your Great Sword Light attacks, so you want to make sure that you put a few more points in here. Um, but Master at Arms, of course, is the more important passive out of these two. Uh, and then in the Ritual Tree, we have got 43 Mighty. 20 in piercing, 2 in precise strikes. So the same thing we had in our magic tree, just kind of uh, emulating that same focus on mighty with the penetration to follow up with half as many points and a tiny little bit in the crit. And then finally we got 26 in Thaumaturge, and that is because we have a lot of damage over time on this build, um, a lot of abilities that count as damage over time on this build. So that's going to buff those up as well. Uh, as for the critical passives here, all you really need is perfect strike for the 12% weapon crit, and then uh, Spell Precision for the 12% Spell Crit. The other passives are nice, but you end up kind of ruining your hybrid build if you want to go for a Tactician Off-Balance spec on it, because you give up too much damage in these other pools, I think. Um, but it's really up to you guys. Tactician is a viable option if you want to do a heavy t Tactician pool. Focus on Master at Arms and Physical Expert, um, and then dump the rest in your other pools as need be. In the Steed Tree, we've got 61 Ironclad and 57 Resistant. Ironclad, of course, is going to directly counter incoming direct damage attacks, which is the majority of burst skills, and then Resistant is going to uh, make incoming crits deal less damage. Very important as well. 10 in Spell Shield, 10 in Medium Armor Focus, just to bulk up our resistances a little bit in both of them. Just nice to put a few points to get that heavy beginning point bonus from them. And then we've got 32, 32 Hardy Elemental Defender. This is to bulk up our incoming physical um, and magical damage. Uh, make sure we take less of it. And uh, on top of it, um, we don't have any points in Thick Skin because I'm a Templar and I'm relying on the fact that I will purge dots and not eat the damage from them. So no points in Thick Skin here. There are some damage over time abilities that are channeled skills that uh, you can't purge, so they will deal the increased damage to you, but I think it's best to just not really worry about Thick Skin when you're on a Templar. And then finally, we've got 48 in the Lord, 43 Quick Recovery for that healing, and 5 in Expert Defender, just because I couldn't get the last point on Quick Recovery there. So there you guys have it. All right, guys, that is the end of the video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. Now, this was just a build update. If you guys want to check out more footage of this build in actual action, you can check out the original spec, and I'll have a link to it, of course, in the description below. And if you guys have any questions regarding the hybrid builds or any hybrid build craft, feel free to put it in the comment section, and I will get to it as soon as I can. I try very hard to answer the questions that you guys have for me in the comments section and finally we are sponsored by what the fast a vpn for gamers if you guys are playing eso and you have crappy ping and you want to maybe get better ping to your favorite game what the fast is a great vpn service that is free to try and it'll give you that better ping they are a local canadian company and uh, i love it because i'm a canadian and i got to meet them in person so it's pretty sweet anyhow guys i hope you enjoy the rest of the uh, little bit of uh, hybrid footage that we have just at the end of the video this is an older clip that we have here um, so you will see it again if you go to watch the original hybrid footage but the original video is about 50 minutes long and it has over 25 minutes of footage in it so go check that out as I had mentioned before if you guys want to see more of this stuff and best of luck to you guys I hope that uh, you guys come up with cool stuff for your hybrids and uh, I hope you enjoy it have a great night and I'll see y'all next time